Hi, John one out here. I'm just ringing my other barrister, Carl Hirschfeld, and see what he thinks about court case yesterday with Shannon Withers. Hi, uh, Charles, it's John Wanoa here. I had my court hearing yesterday and the case was dismissed for Cook Street, but uh, Shannon said to give you a call um, to see if you can pick up from there uh, with um, what I want to do with Cook Street now that I've been cleared of any offence. Um, it just remains the land now. And that case I started off with, that I was involved with you, and we're landing back up on that in Kingi Taurua, uh, in Waitangi. I'm in the Waitangi Marae now, has been open for me any time I want it. I've got a company registered in uh, the company's house London now, Moai Powerhouse Group Limited, and I'm using that now as my authority. Uh, corporate um, sense, okay, and I'm going back to Gisborne to uh, see Sue. I've got a meeting on at uh, uh, Port Awanui, Te Horo Marae, with the uh, landowners. I've got a lease land that I'm going to take over there for the tidal turbines project on the Ranfilly Bank. So I'm going to talk about that presentation uh, on Saturday, 27th, at uh, Te Horo Marae. I've got it all arranged there, okay. So I'm going back to, um, uh, down there for that. Bye. Um, give me a call if you're interested in picking up from there. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's Charles Hirschfeld, my barrister, um, in the lead up to the United Nations with Sue Nakora. We're in that mode now of exercising our authority with this flag of jurisdiction straight to the UK under this company, My Powerhouse Group Limited, Limited. Okay, we're using the corporate trust of King William and the Moai Crown Authority over this government in New Zealand and the police. From now on, after yesterday's meeting at the courthouse, the uh, court hearing for me yesterday, I told my barrister, I want my court hearing, I want my day in court next week, next Monday. I'm just going to send him my email now because he said as far as he's concerned, it's all over. It's not over yet between me and that policewoman Natalie Flowerdew Brown, I want her in court because she committed crimes in this country that I'm putting online. I've got a trial by media, social media, online on Facebook, running right now to show you where the fraud is. And she's a fraudster. And anybody else linked to her in the Cook Street property, that cover-up of that fraudulent land transfer that those landowners are hiding behind the police. She stood in my road and tampered with documents, with all these documents here. These fraudulent documents, all this lot, right? And this police report of all the photos of us humiliating us with this book, huh? 
on Cook Street. It was set up. They set it up. And those people on that site on Cook Street set this up so that Maoris would get caught and that we're the crooks. No, you are the crooks. I'm showing up in on this Facebook site and these YouTube videos smack in front of the whole world watching what you did. Police and those landowners and their tenants. The landowners stood out of the road on top of the hill and watched all this ruckus going on. The Maori marshals, UN federal marshals, are legitimate. You see, they won their case as well as I won my case yesterday for victory, for justice. The judge had to make a ruling because I wrote it out. I wrote the script out for my barrister. Shannon Withers. I wasn't there to see it, you see, because if you see my text on my mobile phone on one of the videos, it clearly shows the time that he texted me just before I got to the court. I walked up to the court from downtown, parked my car way down where the golf course is, and there's helicopters on Mission Bay. Went there, by the time I got there, I got there right on 10 o'clock. Well, just before 10 o'clock, about 9.58, he texts me to say, your court hearing is next Monday. So I'm holding him to it. I want my own day in court. I want her in court, Natalie Flower Dew Brown who forged all these documents in court in front of me like the judge gave me a subpoena to subpoena that policewoman who bodied off all these documents and it's come to nothing it was a puff of smoke disappeared yesterday it fizzled right in mid-air all these papers here I just showed you that big bundle of papers went poof right there and that's not the end of it for me because there's fraud inside those papers you see there's a lot of money being hooked out by those thugs in the court and the police and the lawyers you see no one wants to be around when I'm around in that court I just sat outside the court door and imagine what was going on behind them doors as I expected. The case was dismissed, not dropped. It wasn't dropped. The police did not drop the case. It was dismissed. Big difference between dropped and dismissed. The police could not drop it because they're right in the fraud. The judge made a ruling to dismiss it because of lack of evidence. I put it on Facebook. You can see what I wrote and sent it, emailed it through to the barrister when I left here. I sent it through the email. It's on the email what time I sent it and what time I got into town. You see, I drove at a great knot of speed into town to get there on time. Got there on time. But you can clearly see that I had five minutes before 10 o'clock, I get a text from my barrister to say, sorry John, the case is off to next week. This is after me preparing for my case yesterday. And he just whoops it off like that and says, oh, sorry, not today, next week. And I get there and the other boys are there. The marshals are there. They're all there. And they said, march in. They said, aren't you coming? I said, no, I'm staying outside. Because I consider it their case. They did it in Tikanga law outside of corporate law. I went in there with my case in corporate versus corporate. I'm a corporate with this flag in my powerhouse group limited limited in London, UK jurisdiction in that court. You see, I'm being wise to choose my words carefully. They're very 
tender words I choose and take it to court because I'm serious when I go in there. Anyway, this is the culprit here. You see that? It says John Wanoa. You'll notice that the John part of it is in lowercase handwriting and the uppercase Wanoa surname. Now this is my proof that I was going into court with just this page of whose handwriting that is. That's Natalie Flat Flowerdew Brown's writing because it's all over the documents on the events of the people she interviewed. You see, the chronology, events of who she interviewed. She went through a lot of trouble, six days, to go and see everybody, herself as a big hero, big deal, before she came storming in here with 12 police up and down outside here in this building where I am. I'm going to tell them today that they're the mugs. The mug squad came here and the mug squad lost yesterday in court. The judge threw their case out. It's made the police force in New Zealand the biggest corrupted mongrels in the world here acting as pirates, stealing your money and your birth certificate right here in these documents. Right? So that's the giveaway. Is she signed it in this fashion of wording? Here? Capital. She is the culprit that signed the other half of me, the beneficiary of money that's stacked up somewhere in an account that I want back. I want all this back. This is what I'm telling you, Shannon Withers, Barrister. You were paid by this money to do my case from legal aid that I'm making accountable. I want a full account of that legal aid that I signed. I have a right to audit that account because I'm treating it as criminal under the New Zealand Crimes Act 1961 and New Zealand Crimes Act 1951 as criminal extortion of money using instruments, these instruments, forged instruments, as blackmail to get me to sign a document so that they can hook money off me. That money belongs to me because I'm the other half of the signatory. I want the other signatory person in the court, Shannon, this video is for you. I want that other person who signed that document, my bail bond, my bail bond, opposite me. I want that person in court because I'm not finished with my court with fraudsters. I want the fraudster put in front of me to say where's the money and I want it's my inheritance that's been stolen. Okay? That's my inheritance that has been stolen off me. I want it back. I'm just trying to find the bail bond in amongst all these papers, lots of papers, there's heaps of papers, all forged documents. I'll find it yet. I think that's it there. Right there. Bell. Right there it is. In amongst those papers, I've marked them 20, you see, so they won't get mixed up. They're all in chronological order. Now, this is the bail bond. The deputy register has signed it. And me. Notice the bail bond. This is the instrument that made the money. Okay. And you'll notice... My name as a defendant is Hoani Wanoa. Why do they keep changing the name around all the time? Hoani Wanoa. Hmm? It's 
so you can get a good view of what this I'm saying this document here pulled out $250,000 of money that belongs to me because of my signature okay so the deputy registrar signed it here and it's either him or I want to find who the other signatory to that money is and I want him strung up in court I want that person who signed to be in the court with me Shannon for forging these documents these documents were put together all together in this house they brought them in here Natalie Flower Dew Brown and the constable and all those other police down the outside here in case I ran away ran away from pirates I wasn't going to run away from pirates it took all those people to come here and pick me up they made a dramatic scene and humiliated me I'm, go I'm going to make them go to court and pay for all the trouble they put me through to defame me now it's my turn to defame them you're going to have to pay for that so <clears throat> forcible entry crimes crimes act was wiped out yesterday Right? Hawani, you see, they've made me sign it as Hawani Wanoa. I don't write my name like that. I, I had to sign their bail bond as blackmail to a name I never signed to. I always put John Wanoa. They fashioned this name in lowercase after making everything in uppercase. All of a sudden, they put it in lowercase. Here's this woman, Natalie Flower Dew Brown, putting my name in uppercase on my surname. You see, the deceiving people, I'm pointing it out to you on this video, they're deceiving me and hooking the money up. I want that money back. I want that money all back. And I want them thrown in prison. Everyone who was involved. This deputy registrar could be in trouble. It could be him forging. But I want the I want the other half of my beneficiary money disclosed to me. That's my right. If they're not gonna give it, I'm going to the High Court in London and they'll force it out of them. Because my company over there, Moai Powerhouse Group Limited, is going to force them to own up. I'm showing you a corrupted court, police and lawyers here. I'm hooking them all in because they're all in it. That's that's the culprit. That's the money making one. Hawani Wanoa made the money in lowercase. Look, that's a natural person. It's me. I signed that name under duress or by force to release me from prison otherwise I was not going to get out they won't let me out they have screwed words around to defraud me okay so that's all I wanted to say there I was ringing Charles the barrister so I rang him so that's the end of that and I did not need to ring anyone else because now I'll just focus on getting uh, instruction to Shannon with us for my court case next Monday. I'm saying that because his message and his text says next Monday. I'll show you again his text to me that I've got my hearing next Monday. Regardless of what he said about me getting off the case, I wasn't in front of the judge.
831 yesterday that's when I got the message which reads good morning John we are due in court next Monday not today I will call you later today I am not able to talk at the moment because he was preoccupied with all those marshals they were doing this against my interest of him saying my court hearing was yesterday and all of a sudden it changed he changed me and disadvantaged me from my hearing yesterday all right he disadvantaged me went against me i got a complaint to make but I, I i gave up complaining to the law society and the police complaints authority because you get nowhere i did that for two years and got nothing um so that that's at eight 31, I think it is, just so you can see what the trouble they put me through. The, 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 the judge and my barrister has been working against my interests of being paid out of my bond money and I got no service yesterday. I got only news that the court case is all over without me. I am at the court, so now my no court today. Any reason is it Natalie didn't turn up. I am at the court and take a hike to my car at Helipad, Tamaki Drive. Okay, that's me saying to him. And then he says, where are you? We are in court three, you see? And when he said that, where are you? That was, what time was that? 9.59, see? One minute before 10. He had told me, good morning, John. We are due in court next Monday, not today. I will call you later today. I am not able to talk at the moment. That was 8.31 when I was walking up to the court. 8.31, he, he just told me then, yesterday, while I had prepared a video to go to court with, prepared all my, my um, statement of evidence for the court hearing yesterday, I went through a lot of trouble in a few videos to set myself up for yesterday, then he squashes it and says, sorry, John, I'm in court today, and he's talking for somebody in there, not me. You see, that's the injustice of what my barrister did. It's not fair on me having to wait eight months for my court hearing just to get stood up. I got stood up yesterday. That was 9.59 when he says, where are you? I was in the court, standing there at the bottom and then when he says court three that's when I walked up and the boys were outside and said we heard your name and I says yeah but I've been told that my court hearing is next Monday you see so he was going ahead without me and then here it is again court charges dismissed. See? And so that's 10, 19. 19 minutes past 10. And I'm standing there at the court. And the case is dismissed because he's in the court telling me. Um, I, I, I was instructing him inside with all those things I put on Facebook. You see, that's, I haven't finished with him yet because I'm still taking it that my court hearing is next Monday. Even though I've been cleared yesterday of any crime because they put everybody together. And they're only going on what I say, not what anybody else says. You see, it's always been like that. 
So all of a sudden they left me out and went with those boys to get rid of them. That's what happened, boys, the federal marshals. The judge left me out. The lawyers colluded with each other to leave me up to deal with you, didn't deal with me afterwards. You see, because I'm dealing corporate and you're not. I'm using the corporate flag here in that court against the corporate thugs. Okay, Shannon, that's what I call it, thugs. Because you stole my money, the court. Stole my money, not you, the court. Stole my money. I've got a bone to pick with the court, with a higher court in London, especially for cases like this. That's my complaint on this video to the High Court of Admiralty in London. My complaint is exactly what I'm stating here as my evidence against one Natalie Flowdy Brown, policewoman, and the rest of the whole police force who got behind her and humiliated me with these documents, with these fancy writing on it, with my name all over the place. One minute it's John Wanoa, next minute it's Hawani Wanoa, next minute it's something else. And all to get money out of me. You see, you can see others' names have been changed. Rachel Valentine, see? See the, see the fashion of the words in capitals? They would never write their name like that. Statement from those people. It's baseless. It's baseless. Everything in here from those witnesses on that Cook Street site conspired to defraud the public of New Zealand and me and my chiefs. All of these were fashioned documents in deceptive language. In this capital letter business that's handwriting with my name on it. Okay? So I'm not finished with them. I want this put right out in the court. Yeah, let's see, look. Here it is. John Wanoa. In capital letters, Wanoa. How many times they changed the name around? What for? And in the end, with the money one, it came out, the cash at the end, came out as being a name, Hawani Wanoa, in lower case, to get the money out, you see? natural person, a natural person, I sign. Only me can sign a name like that. See? A name I don't use. Hawani Wanoa. Here. There's the culprit there. Look. After all those names I showed you of John Wanoa's, this one holds the money. With the deputy registrar, liable now. Okay, he signed this document to authorise the court to pay out to this signature, which is me, and one other. You always have to have two names in the contract. This is a contract, right? This is a contract that they put me into, pulled me into contract, right? And I'm the common law person, in lower case, this person, they put that name there, picked it out, and put it there, and not on one hour. My normal name is not Hawani Wanoa. They did that. They put my name in capital letters as Hawani John Wanoa. In capitals. <clears throat> in these documents. This is deceptive. This is crookery at its worst. It is crookery at its worst. It's even in the prison. The prison has done it too. Look, Hawani Wanoa in prison before they let me out of prison. Right? I had to sign as a defendant, Hawani Wanoa. See? This is it, people. I'm showing you. I'm showing you what they bribed me. 
to make money from me and a trust set up with all that money I want back. I want, I want the whole lot back. It's mine. It's mine that they've stolen. Okay? So that's all I needed to show you for now. Enough evidence to sink a lot of them. Charges against you dismissed. 11 minutes past 10. 18 minutes, I think. Past 10. I will phone you a bit later on to discuss. 10, 18. 18 minutes past 10. That was the last text from my barrister yesterday. Right, 18 minutes past 10. That's in the process while they were while he was inside the court. Text me because I had told the duty woman when she came out. She usually comes out looking for someone, and I told her to tell him I'm outside. Right? If they wanted me, I would come in. Well, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. So that's all I want to say for now of this video today. It's um, Tuesday, the 23rd of August 2016, John Monroe, Auckland, Otoo, New Zealand. Bye. Have a nice day.